the project of C.C. McKenna and Doug Wyland, joined by Lena Scissorhands, caused some buzz last year and now presents its debut album, Initiation. Bearing in mind that the biggest comparison we could have would be Infected Rain Lena's main band, we can say that Death Dealer Union is a good surprise. We start it shows the vocalist going down a much more melodic path, which she does quite well, than the music itself, although on the more modern and predictable side of contemporary metal, also has some more classic touches, especially in terms of melodies and guitar work, which makes this album seen as the first step in something that could become much bigger. Combination of two projects by Arvid Jesus Sifter of Lingua Nada and Oat on a single album. On side A we have War's debut EP, a powerful, hypnotic and slightly psychedelic stoner. A kind of endless jam, where we are transported in a fantastic way to a dystopian environment that shouldn't be far from happening. Diable, on the other hand, has some of these characteristics, especially in terms of the sound of the guitars, but the voice is much more aggressive and the music is more sludge and perhaps even post-metal. Two good bands or projects that make this split recommended, What can you expect from a band from Denmark, land of the Vikings par excellence, who set out to play folk metal? A party, obviously, and here we can start with what is perhaps this album's greatest flaw, predictability. A major flaw that doesn't have enough power to take away the enthusiasm we find here. As the cover might suggest, the approach is festive and perfect for any summer festival in Europe. And since it's their debut, we'll give them credit for not straying too far from the competition but we don't think that's exactly something they need to worry about either. For folk metal fans, this is a worthy debut that will easily win you over without the need for huge epic battles. This is the self-titled debut album from the Algarve's Apocalypse Conspiracy, who have a thrash metal sound that manages to be both a tribute to what has been done in the past, especially in the Portuguese tradition, as well as bringing a modern power that is very well received. It's a furious album full of headbanging riffs. The enthusiasm is palpable and spreads to the listener. Knowing that the first step is always likely to be flawed, this debut is nonetheless a solid step in a career that we want to see grow. Um for a good representation of the strength of the German market, and how it has managed to become attractive across borders, bringing together the accessibility of rock and electronic music and adding a heavier feel, or guitars, they have become a reference in modern rock metal, even if they are often seen as followers of Ramstein. On their 14th album, and with a new lineup, the expectations were simply to have another good collection of tracks, and that's what we got. Richter Uen Henker is simple and full of winning melodies, that will appeal to those who like a more accessible and melodic side to their electronic rock metal. Low Life have managed to earn respect in the hardcore world and it's not hard to see why when you listen to their new album, Leader of a New Generation. The Austrian band may belong to the new generation of hardcore, but they don't get caught up in the fashions of the genre. In fact, Leader of a new generation manages to present a quality and dynamics that it doesn't seem to possess at first. That's how we like our hardcore, powerful and dynamic, with surprising tracks like The Weight of the World. More than 30 years on from the start of their career, Gory Blister are still a force to be feared in Italian death metal. Reborn from Hatred is a good example that sees the band expanding their sound and making it slightly more accessible. With a powerful production and a strong melodic appeal, the technical side isn't the focus of all attention, but that doesn't make this album any less impactful. In fact, if we're going to point out anything less good, all we have to say is that the duration is too short and that the intros and interludes were dispensable, especially the From Ashes. Intro, which ends up giving the impression that we're going to hear something completely different. However, when it comes to death metal, they meet and exceed expectations. That's what matters. Fehlertak are a curious case of success. Singing in Norwegian, and not opening up about it, 
Mixing extreme music and the feel of Scandinavian punk slash hardcore with classic hard and heavy and a very vintage sound, they have managed, and continue to manage, to spread their music far and wide, a trend that doesn't promise to slow down with their fifth album, Endling. A work that saw the band working in the studio and managing to bring all their characteristics to a new peak. Those of you who have never been convinced by their music will finally find the work that will convert you. The second volume of Nylon Maiden manages to avoid the most expected themes, both from the band's most recent work and some of the more obscure classics. It starts with a classic we always hear at the beginning of concerts, Doctor, Doctor by UFO. Songs like Different World and These Colors Don't Run indicate that the band have managed to produce some of their best songs late in their career, but more traditional fans will enjoy the renditions of Revelations and Flight of Icarus, while surprises may come in the form of Judas Be My Guide, Prayer for the Dying, and Alexander the Great. There are also two original songs, Nylon Madness and The Dream is True, the first of which doesn't quite fit in with the spirit of the album, being more jazz fusion, while the second manages to evoke the classics and bring some originality to each of the songs. For those who like the sound of classical guitar and Iron Maiden, it's still a recommended bet. Sometimes you just want to listen to something simple without too many complications. Melodies that make sense the first time around, melodies that can even remind us of when we first became interested in music. When it was the melodies, the choruses, the hooks that lingered in our ears and heads that spoke loudest. Something that uncertain joys has in industrial quantities. The disarming simplicity that we identify so much with the 1980s, but which more indie rock has managed to preserve over the decades that followed. A simple record that makes us think about the simplest things with pleasure.